Hello, my name is Michael Kahn. I'm an Irrigation and Water Resources Advisor for University of California Cooperative Extension, and I'm located in Monterey County. I'd like to talk about Crop Manage. It's an online decision support tool to help growers better manage water and nitrogen in vegetables. Growers on the Central Coast, which uh, mostly produce uh, cool season vegetables, are under increased regulation to improve water quality. There's federal uh, regulations for total maximum daily loads for nutrient discharge in the lower Salinas, uh, Santa Maria basins, as well as in the Pajaro. And uh, uh, the state regulation through the Ag Order will limit how much nitrate growers can discharge to the groundwater supplies. A recent study conducted by the University of California, uh, UC Davis, um, has looked at the source of nitrate in groundwater and, has, uh, and this study had concluded that one of the major sources was nitrate leaching from agricultural regions in the state. Over the years, uh, we have researched two tools that could help growers better manage water and nitrogen fertilizer in lettuce. And one of these tools is called the soil nitrate quick test. Uh, because the production of cool season vegetables like lettuce uh, take um, high applications of nitrogen fertilizer and much of the crop is left behind as residue after harvest, soil nitrate levels can build up to fairly significant amounts. Using the soil nitrate quick test, a grower can find out if there's enough mineral nitrogen in their soil that they can avoid a further uh, nitrogen application. A value of 20 parts per million, per million nitrate N is equivalent to about 70 to 80 pounds of nitrogen in the top foot of soil on an acre basis. The other tool uh, that is quite important for managing um, nitrogen in, in shallow rooted crops like lettuce is a good irrigation scheduling and using weather-based uh, methods. While the soil nitrate quick test is quite um, uh, straightforward in how to use it, you, you evaluate the soil nitrate before you do a, 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 a fertilizer application using uh, weather-based tools like the Simis weather network is not so straightforward. One of the reasons is uh, the weather station network, which consists of about 140 uh, weather stations throughout California, each of these stations is situated on a standard covered uh, crop, which is usually a well-watered grass, as you see in this um, uh, photo. What the value you get for evapotranspiration based on Simis is a reference value that has to be adjusted for the crop of interest, which is called a crop coefficient. Uh, the crop coefficients can vary from uh, as low as 0.1 to 1.2 to convert that reference ET to uh, ET value of the crop you're interested in irrigating. For lettuce, uh, that crop coefficient will vary uh, throughout the crop cycle. So the first 30 days of a lettuce crop, there's very little canopy, and uh, much of the water use is actually from evaporation rather than from transpiration because there's not much canopy. Then after 30 days, the canopy cover changes quite rapidly, um, and so is the crop coefficient. Irrigation scheduling based on weather information also requires other considerations. First, the rooting depth of the crop to uh, understand what's the amount of water available or stored in the soil. Um, the soil type will affect this, uh, and also the irrigation system uniformity and the application rate of the irrigation system needs to be factored in in developing an irrigation schedule. In many cases where there's salinity in the water source, uh, a leaching fraction also has to be considered. 
So there's a lot of calculations in developing an irrigation schedule. To make uh, irrigation scheduling based on weather information uh, much more rapid, uh, we've developed an online decision support tool called Crop Manage. The idea of Crop Manage is uh, to assist growers in making decisions on irrigation and nitrogen fertilizer management. And we've designed it to be as intuitive and simple as possible to use. And uh, in the field, you can access it through a smartphone or a tablet computer, or if you're in your office, you can use a desktop computer. And the idea of Crop Manage is to help growers guide their irrigation schedules using the Simis weather data that is freely available on the World Wide Web and automate that process. Simis stands for the California Irrigation Management and Information System and is operated by the Department of Water Resources. Crop Manage will also help guide nitrogen fertilizer uh, decisions using the soil nitrate quick test. And it provides a way to maintain and share uh, irrigation, fertilizer, and soil records um, for multiple fields and farms. So that the heart of Crop Manage is a database uh, that's on a server here at UC Davis. And uh, it's a web-driven application. There are inputs that go into this database that can come from the field. Um, and uh, they could be the soil nitrate quick test. They could be field sensors uh, that are monitoring soil moisture. As well, uh, Crop Manage will automatically pull the appropriate CIMIS data for a ranch. And then there's a base amount of information about this, the uh, uh, farm or the ranch, which would include the different soil types, as well as information about the, uh, each of the field sizes and the types of irrigation systems that are being used. On the output side of uh, Crop Manage, it takes this information and running it through either a crop nitrogen model or a crop ET model, it can make a water recommendation or a nitrogen fertilizer recommendation. Because as we're going through each of these uh, 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 crops, um, keeping records about uh, fertilizer decisions and the application amounts as well as the water applications, we're also producing records of what was done in each of these uh, fields. And this information is freely available uh, to download at a later date and can be exported. Currently, we're supporting uh, several uh, cool season vegetable crops. Um, we began with lettuce and specialize in romaine and iceberg lettuce. Uh, but we have also branched out to some of the coal crops, including broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. And the steps to getting on to Crop Manage and starting to use it are to go to the website, establish a user login, and then you would either develop a new farm or ranch on there or be assigned to a ranch. And there will be a list of existing ranches so you can request access to a ranch. Once you have a ranch, uh, you can view plantings within that ranch or establish new plantings or new crops. And within each planting, there will be tables for soil test records, fertilizer applications, and irrigation events. One concern about growers and using um, sort of a cloud-based uh, tool like Crop Manage is the protection of their information. And we've really designed Crop Manage to protect the privacy of grower data. We use all the industry uh, security standards. Uh, such as um, backing up uh, all the information on two other servers, encrypting information. We do not give out uh, any of the, the grower data that's on uh, uh, Crop Manage, and we're not obligated to give it out. And if UC decides 
we would like to um, analyze or do a study on the data that's in there, we would ask for permission first. So let me review how we uh, determine a nitrogen fertilizer rate uh, using the soil nitrate quick test. The recommended fertilizer uh, nitrogen application would uh, come from some information about the future and uptake. And then we subtract off for the difference in the soil nitrate quick test value minus a, a set threshold of uh, the amount of nitrogen that we know that the soil should have to produce a healthy crop. And then we also subtract off for nitrogen that might come from soil mineralization or mineralization from um, previous crop residues that were incorporated in the soil. This is an example of uh, the uptake rate uh, for um, a lettuce crop uh, through the growth cycle. And one is when you get to harvest and uh, you can see much of the uptake is occurring after 40% um, through the crop cycle. We use that uptake curve to uh, make our nitrogen fertilizer recommendation. So on the top graph here, you see the, the approximate uptake rate of lettuce as we're going through the season. And the lower graph here are showing specific um, dates where the soil is sampled and we evaluate the soil nitrate level. So if we take this latest date, uh, just before March 21st, you see the difference between the threshold, which is 20 parts per million in the soil nitrate test, would uh, equate to about 22 pounds of nitrogen. So we need to get the soil up to 20 parts per million to have uh, good growing conditions. In addition, we look to the amount of uptake uh, to the next time we're going to fertilize. And that would equate, based on this uh, graph here, to about 57 pounds of N per acre. But we can subtract off for uh, mineralization from the soil as well as plant residue, which comes out to four and a half um, pounds per acre. Over this interval, we sum up these values and we get a recommendation of 74 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So it's very important when the user is using this tool that they know approximately when they're going to fertilize uh, the next time because we're always uh, estimating the uptake to the next fertilizer event. To evaluate or to make a recommendation about how much to irrigate uh, based on ET, uh, we need uh, crop coefficients. So we use um, estimates of the canopy cover uh, for these specific commodities. And the way we collected this data was using a multispectral camera that's up on a pole. And essentially, we're taking infrared pictures to measure the active photosynthetic uh, leaf area. And that equates um, through an equation to the crop coefficient. So now I'm going to demonstrate how we use crop manage uh, in making an irrigation recommendation. Once you've logged on to crop manage, you go to the ranch of interest and by uh, clicking on the, the home part of the ranch, you'll see all the active plantings uh, that are on this ranch. And if we look at this planting called Iceberg 22-1, we can uh, uh, click on view details and see uh, a soil summary table, a fertilizer summary table, and an irrigation uh, summary table. So I will just show very quickly how we add a new irrigation event. So we would click on a new watering. We enter the date that we were interested in irrigating. And the last date we irrigated was the 24th of May. We'll irrigate on the 31st. 
and we'll do a drip irrigation. You need to indicate the irrigation method and you simply click save watering. Now, CropManage is getting the reference ET data from the Simis station that I indicated that I want uh, CropManage to use. It is also using that model data of uh, canopy cover to develop a crop coefficient and assessing the soil type, the application rate of the irrigation system, making all those calculations, and you see it gave a uh, water, water recommendation. Now at this point, I could either leave this blank as in terms of the amount of water that I'm actually going to apply, or uh, I could put an estimate in uh, here. And notice the recommendation is in inches, as it is also in hours. When we set up a planting, we give information about the irrigation system to make that conversion. So here I would say I'm going to put on seven hours. And it's converting that to inches. I save that. And it's going to add this information to our irrigation table. And you can view all the events that have been entered up to this point. At the bottom is the total uh, that's been recommended versus what we've applied. Not only can you use uh, Simis station weather information for uh, estimating an irrigation event, but you can also make use of what's called spatial Simis. Spatial Simis uses satellite information to give you better resolution about the reference ET. So a user can choose uh, either using a specific station or if there's no Simis station nearby, then they may choose to use spatial Simis. I mentioned earlier that uh, crop manage can take information from sensors out in the field. And one of the most useful sensors is a flow meter to understand how much water was applied. And uh, we have the ability to put a flow meter like this one, which is interfaced with a data logger and a cell phone, so we can automatically upload each of the irrig irrigation events. Uh, into crop manage. So for a specific planting and irrigation event, you can see when irrigation started, uh, what the average flow rate is, and uh, when it ended. This has been a very useful tool to evaluate and document water management in specific uh, fields. And some fields, uh, this graph is showing the, the cumulative water use recommended by crop manage versus what the grower has applied, and you can see uh, in this case, it's very close. In other situations, we see what's recommended by crop manage uh, is much less than what the grower applies. And this is a very um, useful tool for an irrigation consultant uh, to make use of to do a first assessment of irrigation scheduling. If they see a situation like this, they may talk to a grower about opportunities to reduce their, their water use or better improve their irrigation scheduling. In establishing your ranches in crop manage, you need to indicate the soil types of each of the fields. To facilitate this and make this easy, we've interfaced with the UC Davis soil web tool. And a person setting up a ranch simply locates uh, their fields using a Google Map tool, they would click on it, such as here, and this will pull uh, the specific soil information we need for that field using the NRCS soil maps. To help growers understand their irrigation system application rate, we do have a, a tool in setting up the ranch and each of the plantings so they can uh, calculate their irrigation application rate. And they have one tool for sprinkler irrigation as well as one for drip irrigation. We offer um, help in crop manage through a blog and uh, there's links directly from the uh, decision support tool to the blog. Now, an important part of developing a decision support tool is evaluating its effectiveness. And over the last few years, 
we've been running trials in commercial fields to evaluate the recommendation of crop manage uh, and versus the, the grower's uh, standard practice. And this um, uh, graph here is showing you side-by-side uh, -side comparisons in commercial fields where we're growing lettuce. And what you see is we um, use 33% less nitrogen using the crop manage uh, recommendation overall, which translates to about 57 pounds of N per acre. Uh, and all the yields relative to the growers were uh, very close, and in some cases were higher. To evaluate the recommendation for the irrigation amount with crop manage, we've had to run a replicate irrigation trials, and we've done this um, using uh, standard commercial practices with um, some uh, commercial harvests. Using 50% less water in this trial, uh, we were able to get statistically similar uh, carton as well as cut product yields. We've now started evaluating uh, crop managed for broccoli, and we ran two replicated trials. And, uh, this is an example where we used, again, 50% less water. That's about six inches of less water applied. And uh, for the crown yields, we got uh, no statistical differences. And actually, for bunch yield, we had a slightly higher yield following the crop manage um, schedule. So we saved water and had slightly higher yields. What we are trying to do now is expand crop manage to more commodities. And you, you will now see uh, cabbage and cauliflower on it. Uh, other coastal crops of interest are also uh, strawberries and caneberries. We have now added a capacity to bring in soil moisture data directly into crop manage. So for any particular planting, uh, you can see uh, a graph of, of soil moisture if you set up this equipment out in the field and link it into crop manage. Growers are interested in understanding the contribution of N that already exists in the irrigation water to the nitrogen recommendations. We do not have that algorithm in crop manage at this point, but we are conducting trials evaluating um, how much of the nitrate or ammonium in recycled water would contribute to the growth of the crop. And uh, in the future, we're going to try to incorporate that into uh, the crop manage algorithms. So some final thoughts about developing a decision support application. Um, I think the web application approach is very useful for repackaging research results into very simple to use uh, decision support tools. It's another way to extend our research information from the university to growers. Web apps such as Crop Manage would also help growers track their practices and demonstrate that they are managing nutrients and water efficiently. And I see Crop Manage as a potential tool for crop consultants and advisors to help them assist growers with their water and nitrogen management decisions.